Hi, welcome to Weld Nerd. Today we're going to be talking about the Dynasty DX interface, specifically the 280 and the 210 DX. So for this demonstration we're going to be using the Dynasty 280 DX TIG runner package with the wireless foot control, which is very handy if you haven't seen it. Uh, that's alright because the Dynasty 280 and the 210 have identical functionality in terms of the interface and the software, so they operate the same way from the perspective of the user. Uh, so two things that you'll notice that are different from previous iterations of the DX interface that you would find in the Dynasty 200, the 300, uh, the 350, and the 700, are we have this standby button up here in the upper left, and then the SD memory card port uh, in the upper center. So the standby button functions as what we'd often call a soft power. So you hit the button, and it's no longer a functional machine. So from a safety perspective, you can't accidentally initiate the arc. If your cooler is running, if the fan is running, that will shut it off. And this can also be used in conjunction with the sleep timer, which we'll discuss when we're going through the menus. The SD memory card port is very handy for software upgrades, or excuse me, updates. Um, so if there's a new revision, uh, that can be downloaded onto a regular SD card uh, via the Miller Weld's website. And the SD card inserted into the machine, it automatically updates. Uh, this is also where you would use uh, any SD memory card expansions that you have. So if you have Modbus automation package or anything like that that you got from Miller, uh, you would uh, insert the card and that would open up that functionality. So as we go across, basically we have seven columns. Uh, if you have a MacStar, 280 or 210DX, or basically any other Mac star, a DC only machine, you would not have these two outside columns, so you'd have the only, only the five in the center, uh, so you wouldn't have polarity or obviously AC wave shape. Um, so from left we've got polarity, which is simply whether you're selecting AC or DC. Uh, next we have process, where you have TIG high frequency impulse, lift arc, and stick. High frequency impulse is a non-contact arc start, um, so if you have uh, high concerns over tungsten inclusion, uh, you can go ahead and use a, a really reliable high frequency start. Uh, lift arc is very handy in two circumstances. Number one, if you're welding on something that may be, uh, that maybe has some sensitive electronics that high frequency could potentially interfere with, uh, you can use that. Uh, it's also handy when used uh, with 2T or remote or uh, output on to eliminate the need of a foot pedal or a foot pedal and a switch. And then thirdly, obviously, you have stick. You set that if you're going to be doing any stick welding. Third column is going to be output. So you've got remote standard. That's what uh, you and I are probably most familiar with, uh, using a pedal uh, to um, initiate contact or on, as well as control the amperage output up to whatever you've set on the panel there. Next, you've got remote 2T hold. You, sh you should think of this as like a trigger hold uh, or a latched switch. So. Even if you're, whether you're using the pedal or a momentary switch on the torch, uh, you press it once and it will give you whatever the amperage is set on the panel. Uh, the next time you press it, it will extinguish the arc. And then third, you have on. On can only be used in conjunction with lift arc. Or obviously when you're stick welding, it would be on. There we go. Next over, we have the pulser. Uh, and this is where you control all your pulsing parameters, and we'll get deeper into that in another video. Next, you have the sequencer. Again, that's another video, but uh, this is most frequently used with uh, 2T, 3T, 4T, any of those uh, triggering functions with a momentary switch or during uh, automation. Next, we have gas dig. Pre-flow, you would program how long you want your pre-flow for. Post-flow comes from the factory at auto. Now, what auto means is you have 8 seconds of post-flow standard, and then you get an additional second of post flow for every 10 amps that you are set over 80 amps. So if you have 120 amps set on the panel, you get 12 seconds of post flow. And then dig down here is a function of uh, stick welding. We'll talk about that in another video. Finally, over on the right, we've got AC frequency and balance. That's only accessible, obviously, if you're in the AC polarity. So balance, pro set at 75%. Then frequency, pro set at 120 hertz. Now pro set is just uh, basically the suggested factory settings. It's a good place to start. Uh, don't ever be worried about uh, veering away from them as you find settings that you prefer. But it's handy to know that if you want to get back to kind of an origination point. And then lastly, you've got the amperage button. If you're in any of these 
interface menu items and you want to get back to your amperage, go ahead and press the amperage button and that gets you up there. And lastly, of course, you have the knob. The knob, as we all know, just controls whatever's up on the, on the LEDs. Uh, so that's it for the very quick walkthrough of the interface. Uh, I can't wait to kind of get into some of this stuff a little bit deeper. Thank you very much.